boys and girls, moms and dad, friends and family. Welcome to Storytime with Jamie. I'm so glad you've tuned in today, and today's an extra special day, and I'll tell you about that in just a moment. But if you like today's story, be sure and give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And if you like today's story and want to check out this story in this book or any of my other books, you can always visit jamiebryantbooks.com. Well, the reason today is super exciting is I'm going to be reading a story today called Cemetery Hill. The best part about today is I am actually in the very cemetery where this true story actually took place about 50 years ago. I know, long time, right? Well, this story can be found in my book, uh, Fish Guts and Other Bedtime Stories. So, here we go, boys and girls. Living less than a mile from the town's scariest cemetery certainly had its advantages and disadvantages. The neatest thing about this cemetery here was the rolling hills. The kids in my trailer park and I, we love to ride bikes. Cemetery Hill was a biker's haven and with all these winding hills, an afternoon bike ride usually concluded with a ride through the cemetery. Once in a while, we would ride over by the cemetery when the sun was going down but we were never there after dark. This particular summer day started off like many others. My friends and I began our day playing around the trailer park and eventually decided to ride bikes. We rode around the winding road just beyond our mobile home. Next, we took turns doing stunts on a makeshift ramp that we had found. As always, a day of bike riding wasn't complete until we rode up these hills here in Cemetery Hill. Even in the daylight, I would get a creepy feeling riding around near all those grave sites. The outside entrance resembled something from an old horror movie. Two gothic iron gates were at the opening and at night they were closed and locked tight. My worst nightmare would be getting stuck on the wrong side of those iron gates after dark. Anyway, my friends and I pedaled with all our might to make it up the first couple of hills. Once you made it up the first one, if you kept up your speed, then you could coast up and down the next. We had a great time just riding around. One of my friends named Charlie could glide down some of the hills without even having his hands on the handlebars. I would try that on straight roads, but not on a hill. At last, we topped over the last hill and eased right back out the entrance gate. Right in front of the entrance was a plush, grassy area and we all decided to sit down for a breather. While sitting on the grass in the cool shade, we all started making up stories about things that were supposed to have happened in the cemetery after dark. Everyone's story seemed a little more unbelievable as they told it. My turn came and I just said that I wasn't afraid of anything in that old cemetery. I went on to say, that everyone there was in dead anyway. Well, Ronald said, if you're not afraid, Jamie, then I dare you to ride your bike through the cemetery tonight. Ronald had certainly called my bluff and I don't think he wanted to be outdone by a girl. Looking back now, I should have just made up an excuse or something, but my big, mouth got the best of me. I'm not afraid if that's what you mean. I answered right back to his face. Well then, Ronald replied, I'll do it. I blurted out before I knew I had even opened my mouth. All 
all of my friends looked at me as if I had lost my mind. I believe I kind of did for a few split seconds, but the dare was on. We all grabbed our bikes and headed home for supper, knowing it would be dark soon enough. I could normally eat two plates of spaghetti, but not tonight. Half of my first plate was still there when I exited the table. Darkness came early that night, and when I looked outside my trailer window, there they were with their bikes, waiting. My so-called friends were going to escort me to the entrance, and supposedly they were all going to wait for me there. Oh, I couldn't put it off any longer. Out the front door I went, not saying a word to my awaiting audience. I picked up my bike and we were off in a flash. My heart was racing wildly as we rode our bikes toward this cemetery. We made it to the front entrance in record time and I knew my moment had come. For once, I wish I had just kept my big mouth shut. Everyone stopped with me at the entrance and I knew I needed to either start pedaling or start confessing that I was afraid like everyone else. I chose that moment to start pedaling and I didn't dare look back. Fortunately, I had a headlight on my bicycle so I could see even though it was getting darker by the minute. I rode over the first hill trying desperately not to look to my left or my right at the tombstones beside the graves. If I could just pretend I was somewhere else and keep pedaling, I was sure I could make it. As I pedaled faster, my heart raced faster and I decided to concentrate only on getting over the next hill. With my hands clenched tightly on the handlebars, I strolled up and down each hill. There was only one hill left in the distance, and then I could just circle the curve and be on my way back. However, as I topped over this last hill, a shadow by the gravesite straight ahead of me got my attention, and I looked away and lost my balance. I was able, just before I crashed, to steer toward a grassy area. This move enabled me to land on grass, grass and not crash on the pavement. My headlights started flickering from the crash and I got up off the grass to notice, to the right of me, a tombstone. When I started to back away from the tombstone, I felt an unexpected dip behind me. Almost too afraid to look, I realized what the dip was. I was standing in the center of a sunken grave. Naturally, I started imagining movement and noises and all kinds of strange things. For an instant, I was frozen and I could not move. But suddenly, I remembered the front gate would be closed and locked soon. I quickly grabbed my bicycle and with all the energy I had left, started pedaling frantically. I knew I had to get out of there quickly. The faster I pedaled, the more I just knew someone was behind me. I never did look back. As I rounded the last curve and topped over the last hill, my headlight began to flicker and dimmed almost completely out. I could see the entrance in sight and I just hoped that my headlight would make it until I could get out of there. The entrance was in view and I was almost there. My friends were waiting and I could see two of them in the shadows ahead. Just a few more seconds and I would be home free. But a voice suddenly startled me. Get out of here! You want to get locked up in here all night? A voice yelled. Out the front entrance I rode, just as the cemetery keeper closed the iron gates 
and lock them securely. The girls were cheering for me as I crossed the imaginary finish line. Ronald and Charlie couldn't believe I had done it. They weren't about to congratulate me, so they just grabbed their bikes and explained, we need to be getting home. The girls, however, began asking me all sorts of questions. Was it scary? Did you see anything strange? Were you afraid? Oh, finally able to catch my breath and answer. I said, who, me? Scared? Not really, I said as I grabbed my bike and we headed home. What did you think about that story, boys and girls? Ooh, have any of you ever visited or rode your bike through a cemetery at night? Well, I certainly did. That was the only time I rode inside the cemetery by myself after dark. But I did take on that dare and I did ride through this very cemetery. And yes, it was very, very scary. So I hope you enjoyed that story today. It is called Cemetery Hill. It is from my book titled Fish, Guts, and Other Bedtime Stories. Uh, it was just relaunched November 1st, 2020 uh, with this brand new cover and there's some other really cool things inside. So as I mentioned before, if you like today's story, give us a thumbs up. You can always subscribe to my channel if you want to get um, every time there's a new story released, you would be the first to be notified. And last but not least, if you want to check out this book or any of my other books, you can visit my website at jamiebryantbooks.com. Until next time, boys and girls, goodbye, goodbye.